Hello. This caricature is of Barack Obama, the United States President. Um, I had a, f a bunch of ideas. I had like five ideas as far as um, like his background, his body, things like that, um, that I wanted to incorporate in the in the caricature. But when I got to it, when I got to the final version, uh, his head was too big. So his head was. Uh, full of exaggerations and there just I guess there just wasn't enough room in the background to add all the things that I wanted to add uh, but I did have room for one thing which was the you'll see in a little bit which was like the grenade and him throwing it to the Syrian people or whatever um, so I, I was able to incorporate that but there was gonna be like Oprah in the background with Jay-Z saying no we can't and all these all these things. I mean, there was just like I, I think I counted six. I had like a little notepad uh, that I was just kind of, um, you know, making a little list of things that I wanted to add even before I started sketching. So um, let me see. Oh, the video right now, by the way, it's it's I brought it down to a slower uh, motion. It's uh, this is regular speed. Uh, what you see right now, I did that so that you can see me draw the, uh, the sketch that I went with. So this is, I did, I must have drawn him uh, maybe four or five different little thumbnails. Um, this is maybe the third or fourth thumbnail. Uh, so I just slowed it down so you can see, but this is the actual one that I go with. This is the one that I actually take to the watercolor paper and make it bigger. Uh, this is the one I'm, with, I'm satisfied with, I guess, the most. Um, I was thinking about this today. Um, how do you know? The question is, how do you know uh, when to stop? Um, as far as when you're doing your thumbnails, how do you know which one you want to go with? Because um, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm drawing five or six. You might draw uh, one or two, and you, I mean, how do you know uh, when to stop or to to you know take that one further? As far as making it larger and adding all the edits and stuff. So that way you don't waste your time on something you're not gonna be uh, using. How do you know when to stop? And I, and the answer to that I just don't know. Um, I guess I guess whichever one um, I feel more comfortable with, or whichever one I think brings a, a really good likeness. Uh, sometimes sometimes it's wh whichever makes me laugh the most. Um, I, I catch myself all the time when I'm sketching, doing little thumbnails. Uh, I just start cracking up in the middle of it, or maybe there's a, a feature that that is really extreme or something. I'm, I'm just all of a sudden I start laughing. Um, when I start laughing, I guess that's when I know that's you know that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, but other than that, I really don't know when I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll pick one. Just I guess whichever looks like the best. Um, but anyway, so. What I'm doing is uh, I'm sketching the different things. Now, as you can tell with the other thumbnails, the one I did, the few I, that I did before this one, I started off with like the the mouth because he has these huge lips. And there's just so many things that are just huge about Obama. You have his uh, ears that are really unique. You have his, um, his head. It's real round. And then you have this fuzzy hair that that's a mixture of like curly and wavy. Um, you have these dark, uh, dark sunken eyes, and then you have like this weird clown nose that looks like an airplane or something with these wings for the nostrils, and then like the chin, and then that space right underneath his bottom lip. There's like this muscle. I don't know what the name of it is, but there's this muscle there or uh, skin, but it's um. It's pretty large on him, and then he's real thin, real thin guy, real long face, long neck. I mean, there's just, there's just every feature that he has is an exaggeration already. I mean, you have the really dark eyebrows that aren't, that don't match his hair. Um, it's just he, he's shiny sometimes, like super shiny. I don't know if it's Photoshop in his photos, and then some pictures he's like dead zombie, brown, bluish looking with a hint of green like there's just flatness in his skin tone so I mean it's just there's just tons of stuff um, so I guess I, I just picked the most unique uh, feature with this with this guy 
and I started off with that. Um, sometimes I'll start with like the the overall shape, and that'll work. Sometimes, uh, I guess whatever works. But what you didn't see before it started sketching, there was maybe two hours worth of just research. It, it was maybe a, a three hour span, but if you combined it all, it might have been. It, it would be maybe two hours straight of just studying the guy. Um, that includes I was researching photos, trying to find out um, what his position was on certain things, what was going on in Syria, who who used the chemicals. I just couldn't find, you know, who was using the chemical stuff in Syria. I don't know if it was the president, the army, some rebels. I'm not sure. Anyways, I did get some help from a friend uh, uh, on using what type of what type of wording I was going to be using for the thought bubble. A good friend of mine, uh, uh, Ricardo de los Angeles, and he's from uh, Los Angeles. Um, I met him at the last caricature convention, so I was able to message him. He's my uh, political guru, I guess. He, he knows a lot about politics and what's going on. Um, so he did help me with the little bubble. Um, what I was saying is, um, yeah, there's just tons of features with this guy. Um, so I just started off with the mouth. Um, and sometimes I'll just do just about anything. I'll just kind of, uh, try out the overall shape first, or I'll start, I'll start off with the nose first, or uh, I'll start off with the mouth first. Uh, so in this case, starting off with the mouth, uh, worked for me. It, it's, it worked out pretty well for me. Um, so, um, let me see. Now I'm moving on to the watercolor paper. Um, uh, the way I do that is I, I break off the caricature into like sections. Uh, the middle section from the top lip up to the eyes was a long triangle at an angle. It was tilted. It was a tilted triangle. Um, bottom lip down was like an oval shape so I just kind of drew a big oval on the watercolor paper and then uh, the eyes all the way to up to the top of the head was just like an oval a circle or so, something like that so those three shapes um, and I'm sharing with you how I trace it onto the big paper by the way those three shapes I, I that I broke up um, helped me trace it onto the paper so I took the triangle and I and I, I looked at its position on the thumbnail and I noticed it was kind of in the center, so I centered the triangle, uh, the tilted triangle, onto the center of the page. Uh, so that was how I kind of traced it. Um, it was easy for me to do it that way, and then added the features. Uh, so right, right before you, right there, right before you, I added the, those browns there. I was erasing the pencil. Uh, the pencil that I did all the detailing stuff. Sometimes I leave it on there. Uh, this time I didn't want to leave it. Um, so it kind of it, it served as an aid, uh, just to kind of motivate me a little bit and to um, help me remember uh, the way the shadows and the and the, the shading goes. So um, I just added one quick layer on top of the pencil. It was a real light pink, um, and just just one layer. And then I went out, and after that, then I erased it. So all all the pencil that I erased that came off pretty easily. It didn't. It didn't uh, mess up the pink. It didn't. The eraser didn't take off any of the watercolor or anything. It didn't smear. Also, because I, I used a uh, a dryer, or hair dryer, to make sure that the watercolor was completely dried. Um, let me see. But I guess I spent I spent uh, maybe half and half. I spent half uh, sketching and half on watercoloring. Um, there was there are tons of layers on here. You're gonna see me taking out the dryer, the hair dryer, and erasing um, many times. Uh, in fact, I dropped it today and it, it broke open, but nothing happened to it. It was, it was, a, it still works. But there are just tons of layers um, of watercolor that I'm using, and I'm using a, a. If you don't know, I'm using a, a brand of watercolor that's called Windsor and Newton. It comes in like this white case. There's maybe 20 colors in here, maybe 30. I'm not sure, but um, so I did get a, a brand new set of watercolor marker uh, brushes. They're called uh, calligraphy brushes. They're for calligraphy. 
for writing letters and stuff, but they're uh, it's Chinese lettering. So it's Chinese lettering calligraphy brushes. I found them on eBay. I got a set of like 20 for like $21. That includes shipping on eBay. Um, so that's what I'm using. That, that little white brush is just a regular Hobby Lobby brush the, for all those little detailings. But other than that, the other brush that I'm using that you see me using, uh, this is my first time using them um, on uh, like one of these pieces. Um, but uh, they're really nice. The only thing is that the, the hair started coming out, like the little bristles. So I'm, I'm, I should have spent a little bit more money on, on these. Um, but anyways, they're very uh, helpful. They're real loose. They, when you go to brush or when you go to put your brush on the paper, a lot of ink comes out, a lot of water. Uh, so it has that messy look. So I, I really enjoyed uh, using them. Um, but yeah, they're called calligraphy pens if you want to uh, go buy some. They're Chinese calligraphy brushes. So they have this little hook at the end. I think you, you, you're supposed to like hang them somewhere. But they came in this cool little Chinese box. But anyways, um, let's see. Um, the good thing with watercolor, if 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 the brown or the the skin tone is too like brown or too dark or not too dark, but if it's too brown, and you want to make it uh, a little bit more yellow or orange or even red, you can just um, make a little mixing, make a little yellow or red or whatever color you think it should be, and add that right on top. You don't have to um, you know add any brown. You just take the red and you put it on top of the brown so that way it makes the brown a little bit more red um, so it kinda works like a transparency um, these are just clear layers but I'm fairly new to watercolor so I'm still learning all these things it's, it's a lot of fun uh, using these things uh, but I did warm up I spent also about the, the video that I watched was maybe maybe 10 minutes long so I spent about 30 minutes before I started sketching also warming up so apart from the studying of Obama watching a video um, and just kinda learning a little bit about Obama um, I did spend some time warming up and I watched a video by Nate and uh, it was called caricature theory if you search it on YouTube you'll find it caricature theory um, it's by Nate and goes over some wonderful uh, very beneficial things that should be going on in your mind as you're sketching even before you're sketching um, he talks about coloring and how um, you should exaggerate that and he goes talking about you know the sound of a caricature and uh, finding the unique things and just a lot of a lot of fun and creative things that he does in his style for caricature uh, he talks about basically his theory and what he should be what he does um, very beneficial I, I was able to you know remember a lot of things and think on those things as I was um, drawing this so uh, go check out that video it's really good other than that um, let me see I used for that black that you see me doing I used a it's called acrylic ink um, it's by Speedball. It's like a small little tube, uh, not tube, like a small little glass jar, I guess. But it dried out a long time ago, and I just pulled it out last year, I think, and I added some water in it, and it it just came back to life. So I used that instead of wasting that little black watercolor thing. And it's not as black. It's not super black, so you have to put a bunch of layers. So with this ink, I didn't have to put that many layers. I just put one layer, and um, so I use that. Um, I used a Mars marker for the uh, lettering. I couldn't find anything else cleaner that would give nice strokes. So I used a Mars marker. It's not waterproof, so I made sure that the, I wouldn't be coloring inside that bubble. Um, I used pencil to sketch out the stars and to sketch out the flag. And then I just kind of went, went crazy on the watercolor, just having some fun, testing out things. I put a real light layer of water first and then I would add the color uh, and then just kind of moved on to the next color as the red dries or as the whatever the, whatever section I was just coloring I just moved on and let everything else dry and I think I took a hair dryer at the end and made sure it was all completely dry uh, but that's it I hope you enjoyed it and um, we'll, we will see you next time